Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be introducing one of my new albums and once again this is another collaboration with intercraft.com which has amazing craft supplies at great prices especially their Stamperia products. So recently they've got their hands on some new paper lines. So we've got here uh, Sir Vagabond in Japan. So a nice follow-up to the, the Sir Vagabond uh, papers we had before. And the Alice papers have always been popular. So now we've also got Alice through the looking glass. So the challenge this time was to see if I could take an 8 by 8 pad and make an album. So last time, I had a chance for them, if you remember, it was the Amazonia memory box, which I made with just one pack of the 12 by 12. So obviously this time now we've gone even smaller. So what I've got today is a slimline folio. So it opens up. Oh, I haven't decorated the back yet, that's still to go. So pretend you didn't see that. Just put a piece of black card on the back. We've got a nice image there. And when you open it up, it's been designed for six by four and four by four photos. So each of the page, as is a folio, is actually built onto the cover. So I've started off with a pouch each side. So here we can slip some um, six by four photos in. Let me just check. The album is, yeah, it's more than five. So you could put five by seven photos in there. If you've got some papers left over, you could make some photo mats to put inside, whatever you want. And then we've got some of the lovely images going down our page, which opens up as a flap. And I've just realised I've got one more piece to stick there. I think he's over here. Yeah. Oh, so I'll just need to trim that and put it down. So it opens up, you've got a space then for a six by four and a four by four photo. And on the other side, you've got a waterfall. So again, using that Sir Vagabond image to its utmost. So it's just on a belly band. And then you've got a waterfall for four by four and six by four photos. And a couple of four by four at the end. Now it just closes, but it also then opens up to the side, again showing off some of those lovely nautical papers this time. And then if we go back to the left-hand side, again we've got that magnet closure keeping it closed, and then some magnets keeping this page closed because it actually opens up. I can see how we're using that paper quite sparingly to stretch that eight by eight a bit further. So we have five pages which open up to display plenty of your photos. There, so that closes, and then the left-hand side closes. Now I said the challenge was to use just the one eight by eight. And I was trying to be clever and see if I could get two of these albums from one page because I've still got all these scraps, more of those images, more full page, but I was just a little bit too short for doing two albums. I think if I'd had one extra page, I think I could have done it. Or maybe if you're a little bit more frugal than me, you might manage it. But as I said, I've got all that spare. What would have helped is this is the Sir Vagabond 8x8, but Intercraft have also got are the Sir Vagabond in Japan background papers. So if I'd had these, because there are no pages with like the cutouts, like those and those and the tags, that would have stretched my paper pad so much further. So I probably would be able to get three with still extra pages left if I had the background 
and this. So should we have a look what else they've got in the Sivagabond range? Well, now, if you're into cards, you can also get Sivagabond in Japan in a 6x6. Six six. Or, if you want to make one of those memory boxes I made last time, I think this would look really well. A really good as one of those memory boxes. So have a look at the Amazonia one. Here's the 12 by 12 pad. So you've now got 12 by 12, 8 by 8, 6 by 6, and a backgrounds. I, I think you can even get the backgrounds in 12 by 12. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, it's definitely available in 8 by 8. Now in the tutorial, which you'll be watching soon, I hope, I also mention about how instead of uh, doodling, look at this one then, instead of doodling on your uh, photo mats, why not use the mixed media stamp, which is huge and will stamp that imagery onto your photo mat in a very light grey or br light brown, a creamy ink would be nice for this. So that would really decorate up your photo mats. So if you're into stamping, you've got your papers, you've also got your stamp. Something else which you could use with this to add some extra dimension, especially on the cover and on the inside here, you could add some of the die cut shapes. And what's great with the die cut shapes is you can just add some glue to like two corners, like an L shape, put it down and you can still tuck stuff behind. So we've got some awesome die cuts and there are loads in there. But also you can get a full sheet of die cuts here, which you can push out. But these then are adhesive. So these are great for just sticking straight onto the front of your covers. Or if you don't want those tuck spots, these are great. And the images are a lot bigger than what you get in this pack. Nice tall images. So they're nice statement pieces. So it's a nice chipboard and die cuts. But if you're into adding some 3D elements to your albums, how about some moulds? Now I have used the Stampere moulds in the past using resin, but obviously of course you can use your um, soft clay and things as well but imagine that pakoda on the front of this album i have to turn it sideways to get it all in that is a huge statement one but i love i think this is my favorite is this dragon and that dragon is actually in the papers as well so it all ties in nicely You've got your little clock hands and everything and perfect one if you are into making a travel journals because you can have a nameplate made and some circle emblem ones as well. So those are your maxi molds. So you see all these will enhance your albums. If you like your wooden shapes, again, these are quite similar to the chipboard ones, just wooden ones. You can see, look at all this stuff. I'm running out of space. And I've also got some stencils, which again would be perfect for adding just that little detail to your photo mats. Imagine just placing a photo mat on that, writing, inking through. You'd have just that little hint there to tie everything in. So yeah, so we've got moulds to add to our album die cuts, stencils for our photo mats, wooden shapes, adhesive shapes, stamps. As like I said, I've just used, shown you, uh, shown you the basic here with the papers. And let's have a look. See, I told you that dragon was in the papers as well. Really nice. Oh, and one more. Did I forget to say? are the collectibles. So these are 12 by 6, a half are 12 by 12 page, 
and lots of images there. And from what I gather, they are back to back. So when you cut him out, you'll also be cutting out his um, be the behind image. So you can see lots of um, uses of these, maybe with like acetate pages. If you have that paper down the side, the page acetate, have that stuff because you maximize it because you're getting to see both sides in one. So they're nice and they're called the collectibles. So they would have um, stretched my eight by eight out as well. So that was my practice one. And I've got ready now to make a tutorial. So here is the Alice one. So again, just using the 8x8 to show you can, but obviously there are more things we can add to it. So you're gonna see this close in the tutorial. So I'll just go quickly through it. But as you can see, I've still got all these images left. Oh, I might cut something from here to go onto my cover just to add some extra depth. So I've still got some pieces, some full sheets, more ephemera, more of my image blocks and sheets and some more cutouts. So again, if I'd had this pack, the backgrounds one, I wouldn't have had to cut into. So let's have a look. You've usually got one side with lovely imagery and then a pattern on the back. If I'd had the background selections, then that would have saved me cutting into some of my more decorative, more image-based sheets because I could have done all these smaller pieces with the background pieces. So here, here's the inside, exactly the same as my Sir Vagabond. I think this is just on the opposite side. Using Queen Alice there. The flap, this time I did do a bit of difference because when I came through the papers, I thought, oh, that'll make a nice tuck spot. So you'll see me do that in the tutorial video. And so I'm going to place my ephemera. And I'll show you how to make some tuck spots as well. And then I'll show you how to do another tuck spot there. Again, we got the five pages opening. And our waterfall. So we've got Alice sitting there. And our photo mats. Again, be really nice if you had some stencils or stamps so you could add a bit more interest in that for when your album is empty. And as the Savagabond one, you've got a big pouch there which you can slide more photo mats in or just your photos directly in. And this will open again, just like the Savagabond one. So again, just the basic album I'll show you in the tutorial using your 8x8 Alice Through the Looking Glass. But as I said, this is a follow-up to the original Alice papers. So if you've got some left over from your original one, they will work together. You've got the same uh, colour scheme going and the background papers will work with both. You can see those colours. Oh, sorry, that paper was here. That one is here. So it all ties in nicely. So you've got all those 8x8 paper pads you can get. Again, the staple 12x12 pack. Perfect if you want to do your um, Amazonia memory book, uh, box. And that would look really nice with these Alice images. If you just need some of those extra bits, you've got your collectibles, which is the six by 12 ones. And I say, when you cut that Alice with the cake out, you will get that then on the back. So you've got the flip versions of everything. So there's something that I haven't tried yet. I will give a go. There's also the six by six in this, which I haven't got my hands on. And some new Alice die cuts. Perfect for adding to um, tuck spots and things, or just adding some 
more dimension to your flat cover. But if you don't need that many, you could go with the chipboard pieces. And these again are the adhesive ones. And these are nice big statement ones. So you can imagine all those chessboard pieces along the bottom there as she comes out. Oh, and see, I did actually do the back of this one. I just need to go back and do my uh, Sir Vagabond in Japan one. You just got that one piece of eight by eight to make the full cover. So it's a really cost effective one. Perfect for Christmas, because you could just make a few of these pretty easy and they still look really good. Now I did think that these would make good images onto the uh, photo mats. So if you've got your stencils, you could just have a chess piece there or even a checkerboard just coming through. And again, if you like your clays and resin, some moulds, this one is quite Alice specific. You can see the white rabbit and Alice. And the word Wonderland and Drink Me. So that is quite Alice specific, but the other one with all the chess pieces, which obviously you could use with a lot more things then. Those chess pieces are just fantastic. I wonder if you did um, you claim there and there, if you could put them back to back and actually make a full piece. I don't know, haven't tried it. Worth trying maybe if you get those. So there we go. I'm gonna show me how to make the album, but really go to town. You can add so much more to what I'm gonna give you. So I'm gonna give you the bare bones in two different albums. One for Vagabond in Japan, one um, through the looking glass. So for this, I said it's gonna be a cost effective one. I've used just my black card, some coconut white card, from both of them I got from Intercraft, their Creative Expression cardstock. One piece of one and a half mil gray board. And then just go choose your papers. And I look forward to seeing you in the tutorial.